Okay, we are looking at a little bit more detail here at uh, phosphorylation uh, events. Here we're looking at coupled phosphorylation and dephosphorylation events. So we should remember and know that phosphatases can either inactivate or activate a protein. In the past we've learned that phosphorylation will energize or or activate uh, the protein but and that phosphatases will do the opposite but here we're looking and noticing that sometimes phosphatases can um, activate and sometimes inactivate a protein but remember that dephosphorylation is a transient event uh, and what it does is it returns the um, the protein to the inactive form but we're going to see the opposite here too so first let's look at the top and we can see an A we look at uh, phosphorylase kinase at the top and uh, and then we look down at phosphorylase B and phosphorylase A and we can notice that um, the uh, phosphorylase B is inactive and phosphorylase B is actually involved in glucose regulation levels and it's a protein but when it is uh, phosphorylated, look on the other side of phosphorylase B, the uh, phosphate is added, and so it is now active. But in order to return it to the inactive form, PP1C, which is a serine uh, thyrine uh, phosphatase, uh, is uh, chopping off one of the phosphates and returning it to its inactive form. So the pair need to work together because you don't want to have the phosphorylation turning the signaling on and then the switch just staying on because this is going to cause a lot of trouble cancers for example so remember looking at A that protein phosphatase is, acts as a, a reset button the serine phosphatase PP1 acts to dephosphorylate and deactivate phosphorylase A now let's look down at the bottom at the CD45 tyrosine phosphatase and at the bottom the CSK tyrosine kinase and we can notice the opposite thing happening if you look at the inactive form of P56 LCK we can notice that the pho it's, phos uh, it's phosphorylated but this is the inactive form uh, and um, in this case, the protein phosphatase is acting as an activator, which is the exception. So CD45 is a receptor-like tyrosine protein phosphatase, which primes P56LK for activation. So now you can see that um, it is primed when the um, phosphate is um, taken away which is opposite to what usually happens so remember that kinases and phosphatases are both needed um, but after phosphor after dephosphorylation in this case uh, this protein is activated let's think of some examples of uh, phosphorylation when you have increased levels of phosphorylation in cancers for example um, the proteins all become phosphorylated in uh, cell synthesis uh, the synthesis of uh, the the cells and dividing results in a tumor. Um, this can also happen if you lose um, phosphatases that that uh, would stop the 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 proteins from being active. So remember that in general, kinases and phosphatases work um, in um, in opposites of opposite way from from each other, a kinase will activate and a phosphate phosphatase will uh, stop the activation. Uh, but uh, we should know that sometimes the opposite happens.